But I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit. And this choice is to apostleship for the eleven disciples. Judas by this stage has gone out. But it is also, and it includes, a choice to salvation. Verse 19 says, If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. And the choice there is a choice to salvation. Because the distinction is not between some Christians who are apostles and the rest who are not. The choice there is between some who are world and some who are Christians and therefore not ungodly world. You are my friends, Christ says in effect to us, not because you chose to be my friends like two children in the playground. Do you want to be my friend? Or will you be my but we both be friends? Mutual thing. That's not how it is with Christ. Christ chooses people to be friends in the eternal decree of election. And then in time, he makes us willing and obedient so that we freely choose him, but we choose him because he chose us. <coughs> and all those who are Christ's friends, in whatever office or role they are in the church, he gives to each one good works and therefore fruit, permanent fruit according to verse 16. And he even says, Whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he will give it to you, because you're my friends. And because I'm the mediator, and I have the Father's ear, if you're my friend, he will hear your prayers. Now in verse 15, Jesus says, I have called you friends. He calls us friends because we are friends. Jesus here is speaking the truth. And he says, I have called you friends because he wants us to know that we are his friends. Every true believing child of God this morning should go home comforted with the knowledge that I'm a friend of Jesus Christ. And he wants me to know that. Christ wants us to know that he has taken us for his friends and he will be everything and do everything for us that he as the great friend should be and should do for us. I'm your friend and with a friend like me you can overcome all your enemies. He wants us to know so that not one in the church has any doubt knowing deep down in our hearts and always that we will forever be his friends. And from this friendship, even our own wicked sins and ingratitude cannot separate us. And to this end, the Lord Jesus gives us his spirit. Verse 26. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. <coughs> and what does the Holy Spirit testify to us about Christ? Well, he testifies this, according to verse 13. That Christ is our friend who laid down his life for us on the cross. That's what the Spirit says in us. The Spirit says this in us too, through the Word. That Christ chose us before the foundation of the world to be his friends. Not that we were sort of Arminians who picked our friend and that we would have Jesus as our friend. Not that. The Spirit never says Anything like that. He tells us all his plans and purposes does the Spirit in us according to verse 15. And if we widen this out and think of a couple of texts in Ephesians for instance. Jesus through his Spirit tells us that he is joining Jews and Gentiles as full equals in the New Testament church and forevermore. Ephesians 3 verses 5 and 6. Jesus says to his friends. This secret too. That though the world doesn't know it. You do. That I am going to sum up everything in heaven and earth. In myself. You know that. But the rest of the world doesn't. They're looking for unending cycles. According to Indian religions. Or they're looking for 
a huge planet to destroy the earth or the heat death of the universe. That's not it. You alone know I'm going to sum everything up in Jesus Christ in heaven and earth. That's the goal to which everything is headed. You see, behind this word friends stands the constant, unchangeable, and eternal love and favor of God for each and every one of his children in Jesus Christ. Behind that word friends you say, I have a father in heaven. I can't see his physical face because he doesn't have a physical face. But he smiles upon me and he always does because he views me with deep affection and care because I'm in his beloved son. I'm a friend. And it's not only an attitude of gracious favor that God has for all of his children, but it's also a powerful grace in each one of us which assures us of his friendship for us and which also, and we need this too, changes us more and more so that we have the character of those who live as friends. That too. And if you ask, how is it, how does God assure us of Christ's friendship with us? How does God make us more and more friendly towards him? And I say, a means of grace. That's how he does it. Centrally. Other means related to that, but centrally, the means of grace. First of which is the preaching of the word. I could put it like this. If you sinfully stayed away from church for a few months and then you read a Bible text that said God was your friend, you'd find it very, very hard to believe it. But if you come to church and start living and obeying according to the teaching of scriptures, then you hear it. You hear it in the preaching. You hear that God gives you the New Testament and Old Testament as a precious gift for you to read and meditate upon and hear preached and love. And then God says through the minister on the Lord's Day service that Christ is speaking to you as friends. He does that at the start of the service when Christ says, Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you, my friends. And I brought you to church. And those who are the wicked, who aren't my friends, they think that they have life by avoiding the preaching of the gospel of Christ. But it's in my judgment that I keep them out because they're wicked. I give them over to delusions and lies so that they think wrongly. But I let you in. I tell you my secrets. Otherwise, you'd be in darkness just like them. And Christ speaks as both Lord and friend also to our children in catechism class, he says to them too, Henceforth I call you children, not servants. And the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you children of the church, friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. And that's what we do in catechism class. We make known to the children the things that the Father has made known to us through Christ in the scriptures. And moving from the preaching to the sacraments, what are they? Visible signs and seals of Christ's friendship with us. Jesus says to us in the waters of baptism that this water is a sacrament that I am coming to you as my friend and washing you from all your sins. That's why I'm doing it. And he bids us come to the supper as friends. Eat my body, drink my blood, which I offered up you. The great implication of Christ's friendship with us, as I have been hinting throughout, the great implication of this concerns the life of the Holy Trinity. Remember what we said at the start. Christ is the incarnate second person of the Trinity. To be his friend, therefore, is to be the friend of the triune God. And the triune God didn't...